the government sent out FBI agents. They recruited Native Americans who were on the tribal level of a police force. You know, they so they had police training. Sent them out there to do, disrupt the organization to uh, cause infighting and all of that kind of mischief. So they, they undermined the infrastructure. Oh well, yeah, yeah, because they infiltrated us, and so that, but. Uh, and that's, you'll find uh, more of that here. In the book or the documentary? The, the documentary, documentary, yeah, because the, the book is just about Pikesville. Oh, excellent. It's Reading my, about your experience in the boarding my, school. Well, I'm, I, am, I wrote that book as the little boy I used to be. And one editor at the University of Minnesota Press rejected my book because he thought I should write it as an older person a memoir, if you will, and write it as a like a historian or scholar. And you wanted to write it from the point of view of you as right. a child. It's the diary of Anne Frank, Indian style. Right, <laughs> right. All right. So uh, that's doing well, according to what I just uh, talked to Minnesota. And this is the so far the number of PBS channels that have picked up the documentary, and there's more. How exciting. It just, and it's international now. It's Australia, New Zealand, Canada. Yeah. And I'm a celebrity all over the world, except in Fallon, Nevada. Haven't you been a celebrity since Alcatraz? I don't think so. So you think the government did such a good job in um, submerging you? Uh -huh. That even though many of us have read Alcatraz and know of it, Uh huh. And did you read of my the curse that I put on the sewer system of Livermore, California? No. I remember hearing about that. Well, Was I, that during Jerry's time? Uh, I, I put a curse. I don't think so. I think it was. The man who talked about Livermore. Oh, yeah, we were there with it, Jerry. Okay. Uh, Is that a blue topaz? Here you go. Uh, no, it's my nail. Oh. I'll give you that because here's Thank my you. original. But uh, I carved a totem pole commemorating the 100th anniversary of the city of Livermore with Robert Livermore sitting on top of the pole <laughs> and the I was screwed by the shopping center that ordered the pole. They commissioned me to do this pole for their new shopping center. I carved it, we went through a whole thing, and you'll see some of that in, in the documentary. Well, I saw the picture back here. Now, this is actually what's in your front no, that, yard, No, not the totem it? pole. That's just out here in my gallery. My my totem pole is in Livermore. Oh. All right, uh, that one. I, but I this, call one, it, this one right that's here. That's not a totem pole. That's just a, that's just carving. a bust. A bust, okay. Out of uh, old now, growth cedar. And that's actually out it's here. Out there. Yeah. Right. And is it okay if I take pictures when I go well, out? Go ahead. Well, you have to ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. It's, it's a polite thing to do. It is. I don't want to assume. Yeah. But uh, now, here's a story that comes alive again later. 42 years later. Everybody's in there. All right. The man who cursed Livermore. I mean, imagine... What I did 42 years ago is still alive. I can imagine. It's it's a stuff of legends. Alcatraz is the stuff of legends. It the is. Pipestone boarding school. And here I am, still kicking. And you look good. Damn good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you always were modest, Adam. Very shy, modest, humble. <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> No, actually, uh, I, I've been, since uh, an editor of the Pipestone Star wants to do a follow-up biography nice. after Pipestone, after nice. Alcatraz, then what happened? Nice. So she's the editor and she used to be a critic, a book critic, literary critic for the Chicago Tribune. So she knows her stuff. So. She's now opened up uh, 
the conversation about the possibility of doing my biography, my afterward. Mm -hmm. What happened after Alcatraz? I give you an example right there. Um, the, the curse in Livermore, Seward, you know they ended up years later having to replace the entire sewer system in Livermore. <laughs> Wow. And boy, are they pissed off at me. <laughs> and they needed to fix it, didn't they? Hey, you know, That's the uh, function and the purpose. Well, I did them a favor in the mm -hmm. long term. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because of the, the growth of the valley. Now, wasn't Livermore because of the research they were doing and that it was toxic? Wasn't, wasn't that what the Livermore uh, cursing was about? Isn't that why you cursed the sewer system? Why did you curse the sewer system? Because they cut off the bottom of my totem pole, four feet of it, and stuck the other part of it in the ground, leaving me a little stub. Oh. They said, well, it's just a little park. All we needed was a little pole. I said, wait, you don't... Understand. I mean, they don't know anything about art, mm -hmm. how you can desecrate art. I mm -hmm. mean, we're going to take this... Uh, big painting by Leonardo and crop it to fit the frame. We're just going to keep the smile and discard the rest. Yeah, and, and change that smile. You know, so you don't desecrate art. Uh -huh. So I went in, well anyway, you read that. I will, I will. Yeah. <laughs> so I was thinking it had to do with the Livermore, because what was it Jerry was protesting with well, Livermore? Well, the, lab, the, the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory. Right. But I also put that and the totem pole. So you were the expressing at that time. No, I wasn't exposing. I was just simply one of the different things with the agriculture, industry, and all of that. Their history mm -hmm. is on that pole. Did they bury that part? No, they cut off the lower part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but after the curse, uh, uh, they still laugh about it today. And there's been another documentary called Livermore. Mm. and includes the curse. My video includes the curse mm. and you'll see footage mm. of the actual dedication ceremony at oh. that time. And so, uh, and so I'm, I say I'm pretty well homebound now, but uh, I get calls from all over the country. Mm. I got a call from an editor just uh, on Monday. One, my insights to a story about the Bay Area and Alcatraz and the fleet and a few other issues there. Well. So I'm a resource. You are. I lived history. You did. And now I'm expecting that with the winter break coming to an end for universities and colleges and schools all across the country that uh, I'm going to be getting calls from professors, like uh, San Francisco State, because the guy realized I'm. A, they thought I was dead. I think, mm. because I just went into isolation. So when he found out I'm still alive, and he, he just got all excited. I'm on. He was like bowing and scraping, and if I had a ring to kiss, he would have kissed it. <laughs> And he wants to do a follow-up. Nice, nice. So that's I think it's really relevant be because of the Occupy movement. Right. What other movements have been, you know, Angela Davis when she was with the Black Panthers. And then she went on to become this outstanding professor. Yeah. She was such a, a speaker. I saw her in, in Marin County with Alice Walker and Angela and Davis. Alice Walker wrote the... the Color sure. purple, and she's a soft-spoken speaker. And Alice speaker. Walker came out to uh, Alcatraz during one of our ceremonies that I was conducting. Nice. She's yeah. so soft, so yeah, soft-spoken. Yeah. But Angela Davis, the Black Panthers, Huey Newton, and all those guys—you know—they were spawned by their own black, black power movement. Sure. And then uh, later on, uh, with the capture or kidnapping of Patty Hearst, I was involved with that. But Oh yeah, gee. Now, how are you involved with that? Uh, because the Symbionese Liberation Army uh, said, uh, demanded seven million dollars in food for the poor. 
to be distributed to to the poor people all around the country. So that was the basis that was of a ransom. Kin- was that the kidnap? That was what they wanted for kidnapping. That Patty? was the ransom. Wow. A part of it. And so, um, wait a minute. You know, here's these ex-convicts and killers. They're criminals. They already killed uh, a guy, um, a superintendent in Oakland. Mm-hmm. School superintendent, and you know th- these guys were were criminals. Sink you was a um, ex convict, and so they captured and kidnapped Patty in Berkeley while she was shacking up with her boyfriend, <laughs> which happens, <laughs> you know. So, uh, but when they put that people in need food program into effect, I talked it over with our council. United Council, and nobody wanted to take that kind of food, you know, for ransom, hostage. Because they didn't want to support that. That's right. It would give implicit approval of kidnapping like right, that. Right. And so I contacted the San Francisco Indian Center and other organizations, Indian organizations in the Bay Area. We all agreed we would not accept any of the food while Patty's ha- held captive. That ransom. sounds ethical. That sounds e- ethical. Well, very high ethical. Right. So I called um, her dad, the editor, mm-hmm. at the William. examiner. Huh? William Hurst, wasn't it? Randolph. Randolph. Mm-hmm. Randolph Hurst. I said, Randy, I'm on a first person basis. Randy, uh, no, um, <laughs> I said, we're going to reject that people in need food program. And I'm going to set up a press conference tomorrow. Now, 